everyone and welcome to this binder build video. This uh, set, it's the Paradox Rift, okay? I don't know what I'm trying to get at it with my words here, but Paradox Rift, let's build a binder. I am so excited to do so with you guys. I have got my little methods, my tips, my tricks and everything that tend to be the same in each one of these videos. However, I know you guys enjoy them. Y'all enjoy the organization like I do. Granted, I more so enjoy the organization once it's done than the actual doing of the sometimes it can be calming and relaxing maybe for like the first hour but then after that I'm like I hate everything I just want to burn it I would never but anywho I have got paradox rift here I have got the aftermath of opening my first booster box and everything um, I guess technically off to the side because that was like a week or so ago that I did that but that being said I did do all of the organizing so that you guys can see it here on camera because like I said there is a method to my madness there is a procedure to make progress yeah at least I don't know I try so to start things off you got, well, you don't have to open packs. You could buy these online as singles, but for me, I start off by cracking packs. I open a booster box and then I've got all of that. So I've just got a big old stack of cards that need organizing. They really do. So to start off the organizing, basically I am separating things into rarities for the most part. So I put my ultra rares, so that would be, you know, like EX cards, at least in this era, the full arts. I think those are just called ultra rares now. Uh, we've got our hyper rares, gold cards, right? Is that how we're doing it? We've got illustration rares, our special illustration rares, you know, anything that I consider to be special and nice and lovely. So anything above a hollow, basically. Then we put everything, all of the, you know, things that'll get a quote unquote penny sleeve around them. So my reverse hollows and then my hollows. So I've got those three piles going. I also separate the code cards, the energies, and then the commons and the uncommons. So once I get those all separated, I can get rid of my code cards, throw those into recycling because I've already given those to you in the video where I did my blind unboxing of the booster box and I can also put aside the energies because those are just bulk I don't play the game I don't use them so those go aside as well and then I want to get things sleeved because I'm scared a cat's gonna jump on the table and eat one of my cards or I'm just gonna self combust well I suppose at that point it wouldn't matter whether I sleeved up my cards or not cuz I would not exist anymore but you get what I'm saying right I don't want a disaster to be befall these cards not that a sleeve is really gonna protect them from big natural disasters but okay you get what I'm saying right we're protecting it from scratches and fingerprints and stuff so I go ahead and like said that special pile anything above a hollow I go ahead and put those into the black backed sleeves that I have from the brand you'll see on the screen and everything I just like them they're a bit thicker a bit sturdier than your normal quote-unquote penny sleeve and I like the black backing it just looks nice and sleek in my binder since my binder pages have the black pages backs on those and then I go ahead and I sleeve up my reverse hollows and my hollows into like I said a quote unquote penny sleeve I personally use the perfect fit I think they're actually called perfect size sleeves they're from Japan I get them on Amazon I know some people don't like them because they are a snugger fit than a penny sleeve but I feel like lately Pokemon cards have gotten either Pokemon cards have gotten a teeny tiny bit smaller or else the perfect size sleeves have gotten a teeny tiny bit bigger they're a little bit looser on them now so maybe more people would like them but either way I go ahead sleeve everything up and then I go ahead and I put the black sleeve cards in with my hollows at least the ones that go into the main set and then a separate pile for those black backed cards that will go into you know the illustration rares and all that section of the binder I then went ahead and organized my reverse hollow cards numerically so I can get that done because I like to organize those in the back of my binder on their own so go ahead get those all in place into numerical order and then I go ahead and make piles based on color slash energy for the sleeved rares so I start throwing those down you know any and all psychics go into one pile any and all ground fighting go into one pile any and all grass into one pile you know what I mean so Pokemon tends to always you know maybe in the future they'll change it up but they always seem to have the same sequence sequence they make them sequentially the same uh, so they start off with grass they go into fire then water 
got electric, psychic, ground slash fight, you know, it just, it, on and on. Although I always do get the ground and fighting and psychic mixed up. So uh, you would think I would have it down by now, but either way, I just put those in order, not numerically, just based on color and energy to start off. And then once I do that, I can add the commons and uncommons of the same typing on top of those piles, get those all organized that way. And then once those are all put into their separate piles, then I can do all of those piles individually. So I start off with the trainer pile just because that'll be the last portion. And I like to, once they've been numerically uh, organized, I like to stack them up into one big pile. So I start off with the bottom of the pile, AKA the trainers. And then I go ahead and numerically number out the colorless energy cards, normal types, whatever they're called. Go ahead and stack those up. What's before that? Is it dragon type and then metal, something like that? You know, I just go down the line and I do things numerically that way. It takes a lot of time. My hands are not big enough. I don't have enough fingers to do everything at once in my little fan formation when I'm numerically ordering these, but you know, it gets done. We do our thing and we try and remember that this is relaxing. We love doing this because like I said, at first I do, but once I'm down to like the fires and the waters and stuff, I'm like, I just wish something there was some kind of a thing like a coin counter you know where it could just put things in order for me but either way uh that is that and then after that's all done we get to get into the fun part and actually start putting things into the binder so i'll go ahead and let my future self do that with you guys i hope you enjoy Alrighty, here we have the tools of the trade uh we've got ultra pro binder here got a pen, I've got some sticky notes, I've got my player's guide for the set, and then I have all of my cards from opening up my booster box. So these are all sleeved and ready to go. You guys know Halt Pro makes the binders that I use. I just love them. Take out the protective paper there. Got the nice black fabric backs, and yeah, very good. I don't know why I got gray. It seemed appropriate with the iron, and I don't know, I think it'll look good with the logo once I get that sticker in. And then and this is also the point where I show you that I use Poe Collector when I'm first putting together my binder because it makes it easy for me. No affiliation here, it's just a free website that you too can use, hence all of the ads that will pop up. But uh, if you want to keep records of your collections, this is a great place to do it. As you saw on the last page, it has all of the set names, and then once you actually click on the page like this, you can see the whole set down here, you can see a little blurb about the set, how many cards are in it, when it was released, and then also you can start saying which cards you do and don't have. So, Yado, hi, are you here to help? So, the way I like to use it, get my first binder page open, and then we can start putting in our grass types that we have sectioned off from when we were sleeving everything and sorting everything. So, number one is Surskit. I've got a couple of those we can go ahead and slide on in. And then we're just doing this in numerical order. So, Surskit, we've got number two, Masquerade. We have got number three, the Frost. Last EX here. Slide that in. Very nice. Oh, we've got number four. This is unusual. <laughs> Surely we will be missing something from the first page. We've got number five with Simi Sage, so you can also slide on in. We've got number six with Dwebble. Again, you can slide right on in. We've got one crustal for number seven. And then, oh my gosh, do I actually, I actually have the full first page? This never happens, ever. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Usually I'd be missing something like that EX card, but then we have number nine here for Steenie. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to go into the next page, but before we do that, then, like I said, I like to go ahead and mark off on Poke Collector that I do indeed have these cards. So, it is not a perfect site. Sometimes it forgets that you checked something off, but I mean, it is free, so you can only get so mad at it, right? Now, hopefully that's still in your field of vision. So, number 10, we have Blip Bug. I swear, we will run into something that I don't have eventually. We really should. Uh, we have number 11, 
And we have number 12 with Ore Beetle. We have number 13, Nimble. Shoop. We've got number 14, Nimble. Oh my god, how do I? This is very rare, you guys, seriously. Even with commons and uncommons, I usually am missing some from my first booster box. So we have got number 16, Toad's Cool. We have got number 17. Oh my god, my first two pages. Are you serious? I had these. That's actually incredible. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll check them off over on Pocollector here. I am in absolute shock, my friends. So I got all the grass cards. Wow, okay. So now, going into the fire. Shoop. Let's see. Surely I am missing something. But we are starting off with number 19, Magby. Boop. And then number 20 with Pan Seer. In you go. Boop. Simi Seer. Oh my my gosh okay um fire is also not letting me down so far there we go we've got number 23 okay this is just a little come on this is not very conducive for building a binder video although i am excited that i actually have these cards because <laughs> like i said it's been hard for me to even get all of the commons and stuff on the first go around so in you go and then okay we are missing number 27 Perfect! So then I can show you what I do with that. So, like I said, over on Poe Collector, we can go ahead and we can start to mark off the cards that we do have, which is most of these. However, then we ran into this guy, number 27. This is where the sticky note comes in. There, make sure. I think that should be on screen for you. And then we can go ahead and write down the card that I'm missing. So this is... Um, Arm Rouge EX, and this is number 27. Hey, hey. Now we can take the sticky note off and we can go ahead and put that in. So that is how I do my binder. So I'm going to go ahead, turn to the next page, and then we can continue on with a beautiful speed through. Ready, set, go. <laughs> That's all done. All of our sticky notes. All of our very sad pages full of sticky notes. <laughs> 
for the illustration rares and whatnot. But now, real quick, we are able to go ahead and do our stack of reverse hollows, which is always fun. You just have to be cognizant that some cards do not come in reverse form. So the EXs and then above that. So EXs, illustration rares, full arts, ultra rares, that sort of stuff. For example, we can go ahead and get out the card list here. So you'll be able, at least if you do it numerically like I do, you can go ahead and slide them in in numerical order. Just like I said, making sure you skip things like uh, card number three, because there will never be, at least as of right now, a reverse hollow of an EX card. So we don't need to worry about space number three. We can go right into card number four, which is Pan Sage. So I'm going to go ahead and slide these in where they belong and then we'll be back. So it looks like we've got a few, four extra pages. I personally, I don't know, four might be too many to stick in here eventually. As of right now, with the binder not super full, it's okay. But uh, yeah, so I was able to get in all of my reverses. They're looking a little, a little scarce on some of the, some of the spreads here. But overall, this is what my binder looks like after the one edition of a booster box. So now we can go ahead and add in the cards that I got from my Elite Trainer Box battle, which was a bunch of packs, and we should be able to, at least a couple of these, this is the saddest spread, two whole pages, I don't have one of these cards, ah, alas, we will go ahead and fill this up as best we can. I'm actually really happy with the amount of rares and uncommons that I got this time around. It really is mostly EXs and like some uh, hollow cards that I don't have. So that's actually fun to see. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Definitely some things we can add, even if it is just friendship like this one. I do put in two uh, hollows per slot, and if it doesn't have a sleeve around it, like commons and uncommons, that can hold three. I just find it's a snugger fit, which I personally like, so that the cards don't slide out as easily. So we can add one Iron Moth friend, two Iron Moths for bulk. Both these Chiyus are bulk. We can, however, go ahead and add in this lovely Garchomp EX. Get rid of that sticky note, I'm telling you. It's just so satisfying to be able to pull that off. And it leaves no residue, so yay. Palkia, oh my god. All four of these are bulk. We can go ahead and add in an extra Serena EX. There we go. Glycopod is bulk. Chien Pao can have a brand. And then I believe, yep, so Latios is going to be bulk. Deoxys, however, well, two of these anyways, we can go ahead and add on in here. Boop, and wow. Very nice. Uh, this one will be bulk though. We did get two Espathras, so we can go ahead and add them in right there. Very good. Groudon can have a friend. Let's see, where are, there's our Minecrafts. That is one that I have pulled a bunch, so these three will also be bulk. Boop. We did get Sandy Shocks EX though, so that's exciting. We can go ahead and add that guy in. Tinglu, however, will be bulk. We got some Uveltals, so that's good. We can add in those two there. We can also go ahead and add in our one Thievel. Very nice. Brute Bonnet gets a friend. And Roaring Moon, you will never be lonely. You're starting off with a friend. How nice for you. In you go. Boop. Steelix can also have a friend. Age slash you. Oh, nope. You bugger. You already had a friend. 
to bulk you go. Zashian, however, can have a friend. The golden cheese stick can have a friend. Porygon Z can have a friend. And then we are getting on in. Sorry, I only brought my sleeved cards over, so it's possible I got a couple of those other uncommons or whatever that I might be missing, but uh, we are sorely lacking on illustration rares here, unfortunately. I know. Look, did I really not pull any? Wow, that is sad. <laughs> no additions to this spread here however we can go ahead wait oh haha -ha. cassie can't count nothing is new Woo! we do get to add in that guy oh and our tapu coco oh my god really all three of these <laughs> Oh, I surprise even myself, my friends, but there we go. How exciting for us. Yay, it is nice to not have two naked pages. So now we can go ahead and get out of the ultra rare section, going into the special illustration rares where we will be able... Oh my gosh, I really am not doing very well. Did I just... Oh, I'm such a numbnut. What is wrong with me? I went from 45 to 53. Why, Cassie? Why? <laughs> this messes everything up. Oh, crap. Okay, so 45, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3. Oh my god, I have to move everything over so much. Oof, oof. But this is the nice thing about the sticky notes. Yeah, if we do make a mess up like this, it is easy enough to just kind of slide everything over. Oh, that does hurt though. And I will have to go in and fill in those spots and I will have to go in and fill in my, uh, or redo my reverse section. So this will take a minute. One moment. Oh God, I can't believe I did that. Yufka. Now, of course, my battery is almost dead. That's wonderful. Let's see how quickly I can add any of these in, huh? If not, I just hope you enjoyed the binder. <laughs> You'll see it in upcoming videos here uh, when I add in other additions. So don't don't be too sad. We will see the binder eventually, just depending on when my battery fills up. I'm sorry. It's just it's Vlogmas. I'm using my battery more than usual. So ah, was that lovely, fulfilling, nice to watch? I don't know relaxing, whatever it was to you. I hope you enjoyed watching me put together my binder, not only my booster box hits, but then the extra hits I've gotten since then from my elite trainer boxes. Does my binder look nice? I haven't seen it myself yet, because like I said, that, that was future Cassie that made my binder, um, but I'm sure it's looking good. Things are starting to fill out. I'm sure I've got a lot of full arts and illustration rares and special illustration rares that I'm sorely still needing, but we're not too far into this set yet. So hopefully I will pull some of those in time. If not, I'll buy them as singles, no big deal. Unless it's like the $100 singles, in which case I don't know that those will ever get into my collection, but either way. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got some tips or tricks, or like I said, you just find these videos relaxing. There's no right or wrong way to build a card binder, so any way that you wanna do it, that's completely fine. <laughs> it's just however you like to collect, however you like to organize. This is just the way I do it. Who knows, maybe it'll change in the future, but right now I feel like I'm at a sweet spot with my organizational skills with my Pokemon cards. So I enjoy the way I do it now. I hope you guys enjoy it too. Let me know any tips or tricks that you may have in the comments below. How are you doing with your Paradox Rift collection? And just let me know really whatever you want, how you doing in those comments below. Also, if you are new here, Hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe by tippity tapping that notification bell down below and becoming a member of my casserole family. Be it here on this channel or my main channel. I'd love to have you here, there, and everywhere. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, stay well until then. Bye.